I promise llamas, we promise llamas, llamas are here. Uh, it is uh, my absolute honor to welcome uh, Andrea Tibbetts of Cloverbrook Farm. Um, Andrea, oh, there they are. Um, Andrea is gonna take us on a tour um, and meet, oh my gosh, they're so cute. Okay, uh, I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna let Andrea talk, um, but I am gonna sit on stage and you're gonna get to watch my expressions as we meet all these incredible creatures. Okay, so good afternoon. At least it here is on the East Coast. My name is Andrea. I am the owner of Cloverbrook Farm. And uh, you are being uh, greeted here by 14, we'll walk around and see all of them, of our male llamas and alpacas. And we'll talk to you a little bit about them because we have uh, llamas, we have alpacas, uh, we actually have an assortment of animals. We have sheep, we have goats. Uh, our purpose here on the farm is we raise animals specifically for their fiber. Um, and so as you all know, you've probably heard about alpaca fiber. Uh, llama fiber is just as soft. And so between the 18 llamas and alpacas we have and the Shetland sheep, there's 37 of them, um, we are producing about 150 pounds, 150 of fiber a year and this fiber gets sent off to mills and gets processed into yarn and other, other types of wonderful goodies. So as I mentioned, uh, we would show you the difference between a llama and alpaca. I happen to have two standing side by side. It's kind of hard to see, uh, but the black one actually is a llama and this one here on the right is an alpaca. And and maybe this will be because these guys are standing side by side so you can see the difference. We like to tell people exactly what the difference between a llama and alpaca is. Um, <laughs> this wonderful, handsome guy, his name is Prince Caspian. Uh, it's a theme from Narnia. His father's name is Asland. And he is a llama. Here, Prince Caspian, say hi and pop your ear up. And so the difference between llamas and alpacas, is llamas have banana shaped ears. So you can kind of see how it curls in. He's going to eat my cord, so we're going to tell him no. And the other difference is llamas are larger than alpacas. So we have this little cutie right here. He just saw me coming to him with the camera. <laughs> and this little guy is an alpaca. Um, he's more fluff and stuff than he is anything else. Um, he probably has about... I'd say five pounds of fiber on him right now. When he gets shorn this spring, about 10 pounds will come off. And by the way, his name is Fitz Willie which is very suiting for him because he's a little fitzy. Um, he's not thrilled with people putting the camera in his face. That's fine. Um, but he is an adorable little alpaca. Um, I'll try to find another alpaca so you can see the fiber. So again, Prince Caspian. And this is Guy's name who you saw when we were flashing through. His name is Danan. Uh, and he was one of our breeding males. He's a handsome guy. Um, he's one of the one of our biggest llamas I say we have here. Llamas range between four and five hundred pounds. Alpacas are about two hundred to two fifty. Um, and as we you started to see, and we'll keep moving over the side, they come in all shapes and colors basically. Um, we have whites, we had blacks, we have browns. We have more whites. <laughs> so as a fiber farm, we like to keep our colors um, pretty much as whole as possible, meaning we don't like to introduce too many multiple colors because when it comes time to separating out the fiber, as you can imagine, it can get a little difficult because then we'd have to take the white out, we'd have to take the brown. So you have a whole crew here that's pretty much white. That's Sydney. <laughs> he looks, he's, he's looking to chew my ankle. Um, this guy is Biscotti, also known as the Kissing Llama. He is actually, what's interesting, he's referred to as an Appaloosa. You've probably heard of Appaloosa horses. Hi, honey. Um, he's an Appaloosa Llama. Appaloosa is coloring. So you can see he's white with all these little brown dots. Um, and so he's actually what you refer to as a light fiber animal. He doesn't have a lot of fiber on him. It's just the style llama he is. I'm sorry, I'm having a little moment here with Biscotti while I show you his body. He's coming up and giving me kisses, as I said, what he's known for. Um, so let's see who else we have here. We have Percy, and this is his brother, Jackson. If any of you are familiar with the theme, the, the book Lightning Thief, Percy Jackson. We like to keep our themes going here. To be honest, is how I remember everyone's name. <laughs> so Percy is and Jackson is the son, or I say sons, of Hal. 
the llama. So Hal actually uh, had a, a little bit of a breeding career before we picked him up at a farm. And then we went back to that farm a couple years ago and we said we'd like to purchase some more llamas. And they said to us, are you interested in buying Hal's sons? And of course we were. So Hal has a little family here. And the interesting thing about this guy, again, his name is Jackson. Jackson is blind, which you probably wouldn't notice at all. If you got really close to his pupils, it would look like cataracts. And he was born blind. Um, he can see shadows outside, uh, but when he's in the barn, obviously, it's more difficult because it's very dark. So he is what I refer to as my barn rat. He pretty much sticks around the barn, obviously, because he feels safer. But he does travel outside the barn, making sure he's always with his brother. Again, Percy. They are a unit. So he has no idea I have the camera in his face, which is why he's standing so nicely. <laughs> <laughs> we will take advantage of that. Unlike some of these others, another white one, his name is Sydney, and he knows I have the camera on him around him, so his ears are back. But we'll go back to adorable Jackson again. We'll just switch the camera. There we go. Uh, you probably can't tell, but Jackson is mainly white, and Jackson and his brother Percy are only, oop, look at dad's coming over to say hi. I don't know if you can hear, there's a little bit of clicking going on. That's their way that they communicate with one another. Um, ears were also patient. So I should tell you that Percy and Jackson are two years old. Hal, you see his backside, is eight years old. So, um, so we have a whole crew here, but we're going to keep traveling over. Um, here in the Northeast, I'm going to bring you over to, uh, I have a group of all Pakistan standing here waiting. And we can say hi to Dana again. <laughs> Andrea, what do <laughs> and, llamas eat? We have a question from Tony in the audience. Um, sure. So llamas eat mainly grass, or you could refer to it as hay, which is dried grass. So uh, that is the staple to their diet. They're originally from South America. That's pretty much all they eat there. Um, however, we in the States tend to uh, supplement their diet with what we call sweet feed or some type of grain, which is kind of like equivalent to our fortified cereals. And so these guys all get a little bit of grain at night. Um, the grain has oats and barley and corn and is basically steeped with molasses. So it's just, that's why they call it a sweet feed. Um, it's something of course that they love because it really is very sweet smelling. Um, and it's a way that we can um, make sure that they're getting all the right vitamins they need, especially here living on the East coast where winters tend to be a little chilly. As you can see, there's some snow on the ground still. Um, and so keeping weight on them is very important during the winter. <laughs> So we'll go back up here. Um, I just want to introduce that's Twist, Shout, Ringo. Ringo, say hi. So these were ooh, passing through. These were our very first rescue alpacas. And yes, we have a Beatles theme going. <laughs> that's the fun of it. Uh, Twist and Shout actually um, are. Uh, fiber ambassadors for an organization here uh, that is uh, calls upon us called World Vision. Um, and not this year, but for the past four years, we would travel down to New York City, go on camera, and we would uh, represent World Vision when they would be raising money on Giving Tuesday for people to support and buy, or I should say donate money for third world countries so they could buy alpacas and have their own fiber. So these guys are are pretty, uh, pretty popular. They've been on Dr. Oz and Rachel Ray and Today Show. So, but one of the things I wanted to show you is, let's see if we can get up close to, actually, we'll, we'll go back to Ringo. There's two different types of fiber that comes on llamas and alpacas. There's Surrey, and that is a Surrey alpaca. You see how his fiber kind of swings as he walks? It's almost like long hair. That's kind of how it feels. It's silky, it's smooth. And so we have three Surrey alpacas and we have four, and we'll go back over here to some more white animals. The fluffy ones, you met Fitzwillie originally. Here are some white ones. They're called Wakaya. And the wakaya is what a lot of people kind of relate to because that is applied for both alpacas and llamas. Um, these guys here grow about 10 pounds of fiber a year and their fiber will come off in the springtime when it starts to warm up around here. If you don't, I'm not sure if you 
are familiar with the origin of llamas and alpacas. They originated in South America, came to the States in the 60s to starting new fiber pool. And so more importantly is um, our summers here on the East Coast seem to be getting increasingly warm. And so uh, these guys, these animals are very susceptible to heat stroke. So their fiber has to come off in the summer. Um, because if you, by the time he's finished growing in May, as I mentioned, 10 pounds, it will be a staple length of about six inches. And uh, it's equivalent to, I would say, like two to three winter coats. So that would be why they would be very susceptible to heat stroke. I guess we would be too if we were wearing three or four winter coats when it's 90 degrees out. <laughs> so um, so that's uh, the difference of what I mentioned in Wakaya. And then again, Danan, <laughs> he is a Surrey. Alpa Surrey llama. You see how it kind of flows down? It looks like kind of single locks. So, and he is a looker and he knows that that's why he's standing here posturing to me. He's like, show this side, make sure I look good. <laughs> Are there any questions before I keep talking? Um, where exactly is the farm? You're a couple hours north of New York City? We, yeah, we're about an hour and a half north of New York City. Um, and we are, you know, there's a couple parkways that um, we're just about 10 minutes off the parkway. And so it's a nice, easy drive. A lot of people that come to the farm, we offer uh, llama alpaca hikes. And um, most of our visitors come from New York City because it is kind of a, a nice, easy trek and a welcome respite out of the city or city life. Um, and so we do uh, llama alpaca hikes here. Um, we usually run two a day and um, rain, snow, sleet, well, to a certain extent, uh, <laughs> in, in, in any climate. So um, people really enjoy, of course, uh, right now, be able to find COVID-friendly and safe activities. That's wonderful. Um, for anyone in the audience, do we have any questions? Oh, great question from Sarah. Um, how do they sleep? So when they sleep, they generally are um, cushed is what it's called. One of us, you know, like humans, we lie down. Um, and cushing is how a cat would sleep. They typically tuck their legs and arms underneath them. And then either their head would be up and they would sleep with their eyes closed or they would lie their neck down on the ground. So it's actually referred to as cushing. It's very rare that they lie, lie on their side. Um, llamas actually, I'm not sure if you know, but one of their main purposes here in the United States is their use as guard animals. And so they're uh, a species that is always, always alert to anything and everything. And so obviously if they were to lie their head down, they would potentially not be able to respond as quickly. So in a cush mode is how they sit or how they lie or how they sleep, generally with their heads up. When they're in guard mode, like how do they, mm -hmm. do they like, make a noise like how, how do they sound the security alarm so yeah so um they're extremely observant they have the ability to see 180 degree peripheral in terms of vertically and horizontally which allows them to see literally kind of literally is what you would say out of the corner of your eye <laughs> um but how would they would alert to the rest of the herd or whoever they're guarding is they make this high-pitched call um, it's almost, it's a call it alarm call. And as you can imagine, it, it sounds like an alarm. And typically what would happen is the ones that they're guarding, which in our case would be goats and or sheep, they would seek shelter immediately once they heard that call. And then whether we would want one llama or all of our llamas together, we'd get together and check out what this one llama is or whatever animal is making the alarm call to. So in terms of predators here at the farm, um, we have very good fencing. And um, if we were to have a predator to get in, more than likely it would be a coyote. That's typically what would be our worry. Would be a fox, uh, wouldn't be a, a skunk or a possum, would be a coyote. Uh, great question from Audra. Do you have to brush their hair? Oh, yes. <laughs> so we, <laughs> which as you can imagine, I mean, some of them look pretty clean, but some of them don't keep themselves quite as tidy. So some of my animals love to roll and everything, but the only time we brush them is before we go to a llama show or if we go off um, the farm for a farm call, if we go visit someone. Um, and the other time is when we're going to shear them basically take all their fiber off. We'll brush them out in advance just to make sure we can get all these bits of hay and things. What is the llama population in the US? 
That's a good question. At one, you know, just like everything else, it comes with ebbs and flows. Right now, llamas and alpacas are pretty popular, as we all know. Um, I think at one time I heard they were in the fewer, few hundred thousands. I wouldn't be surprised because there's such a higher demand now for llamas and alpacas over the past couple of years. A lot of the breeders are responding to that and breeding more. So not to say that it would have doubled, but I'm sure the numbers are increasing. Well, <laughs> this, is, this is wonderful. Um, do we have any questions from the audience? I, I, I don't know if you can see the audience, Andrea, just lots of people saying how amazing this is. They love the names. <laughs> Uh, they they love this. Somebody's saying that they want llamas for their birthday. Um, I guess. <laughs> their hairstyles look better than mine. Um, just a great, <laughs> a great, great response here. Um, cool. Well, this has been uh, an absolute joy. Um, uh, you know, we we've been uh, our, our previous panel, which was on you know HR um, uh, technology. Uh, we had our moderator Kevin, who's who's in here, was giving us llama facts. So we were getting ready, but I think this uh, frankly exceeded even our very very high hopes uh, for what the experience <laughs> would be like. So thank you so much uh, for for bringing us on the farm, uh, bringing these llamas into our lives. Um, thank you to the audience. Thank you so much, everyone, for sticking around. Um, Andrea, I can't thank you enough. This was, this was truly wonderful. Um, and yeah, I think we'll be, we'll be talking about this one for, uh, for, for years to come. Oh, cool. my pleasure. And of course, if they want to keep following us, they can find us on Facebook and Instagram. We have tons of pictures, daily postings of these adorable critters. So, um, look for us there. And if you're ever on the East coast in, uh, New York, check us out. Excellent here. And I, for everyone, uh, I'm putting <laughs> their, the website uh, for their farm um, in the chat here. So you guys can check them out, Cloverbrook Farm. Um, Andrea, this was so wonderful. Thank you. Everyone else, have a wonderful uh, rest of uh, the week, um, the rest of, not the rest of 2021. Um, our next uh, rack event will be um, uh, next quarter. Um, so finalizing the date, but we'll, we'll announce that soon. Um, and really excited, uh, to, to see you all then. Um, take care everyone.